the co-founder of the popular app HQ Trivia, Colin Crow, has been found dead in his apartment in New York at the age of 35. The CEO, who also co-founded the video platform Vine, was found by police after his girlfriend reportedly asked them to check on him. An HQ spokesperson confirmed the death with deep sadness. HQ Trivia, a live trivia game on mobiles, became hugely popular, although its appeal went this year. Officers of the New York Police Department went to Mr. Crow, is flagging Manhattan to carry out a welfare check, and found his body, along with drugs paraphernalia nearby. TMZ reported in the initial media coverage of his death. The HQ statement read, We learned today of the passing of our friend and founder, Colin Crow, and it is with deep sadness that we say goodbye. Our thoughts go out to his family, friends, and loved ones during this incredibly difficult time. The company confirmed Mr. Crow is aged after police had initially said, 35. Mr. Crow is father, Alan, told the New York Times. He had so much talent and had accomplished so much at such a young age. It truly is a waste. Mr. Crow co-founded HQ Trivia with Russ Yusupov. Mr. Yusupov paid tribute on Twitter. So sad to hear about the passing of my friend and co-founder Colin Crow. My thoughts prayers go out to his loved ones. I will forever remember him for his kind soul and big heart. He made the world and the internet a better place. Rest in peace, brother. End of Twitter post by at HQ Trivia was launched, and as last year, and Mr. Crow was named CEO this September. The free app live streams quiz shows, with a pot of money often thousands of dollars available, to split between winners. The quiz show was best hosted by some big names, from Jimmy Kino to Bird. From Sesame Street, its popularity faded this year, dropping out of the App Store its list of top 100 apps. Mr. Crow was also a co-founder of Vine, a six-second video streaming service that was bought out by Twitter in 2012 for 30 million m 24 mi. Vine announced in December 2016 that Twitter was discontinuing the mobile app. A buyer who illegally demolished a famed house in San Francisco has been ordered to rebuild an exact replica and install a plaque outside explaining what happened. Large and house in the city is Twin Peaks neighborhood was built in 1936 by eminent modernist designer Richard Nutra. Its owner, Russ Thompson, bought the property last year for $1.7 and had permission to renovate it. That did not include knocking it down. Cheryl Travers, a neighbor, told local TV station KPIX5 that she filed a complaint. After coming home to find the house demolished, I went to New York for about a week, an a half, and came back. The house was gone, totally gone, she said. Mr. Johnston told the San Francisco Planning Commission he had bought the property as a family home that would enable my family of six to move back to San Francisco and had been stuck in limbo for over a year. His lawyer also argued that the historic house had already been altered by former owners. Nonetheless, the commission ruled last week that the replica must be built and not the larger home the owner had planned in its place. If the property is sold, the new buyer will also be obliged to honor the ruling. Ms. Travers called the decision a victory for the neighbors and the little people. Before it was filed, Largent House was a two-story white building with an indoor swimming pool and one of just five homes Nutra designed in San Francisco. SF Curb profiled it in 2010, writing, we know nothing about Mr. Mrs. M.S. Largent, but this was radical stuff in the middle of the Great Depression. Planning Commissioner Dennis Richards said he hoped the story would prove a cautionary tale. If a developer has even a thought of demolishing 
a house illegally, I'd be like them to go up to 49 Hopkins and take a look at the plaque, because this is what is going to happen in the future, he said. A Brazilian faith healer accused of sexually abusing more than 300 women has handed himself into police. Local media report, Joe Toxara de Faria, known as Son of God, was declared a fugitive on Saturday after missing a deadline to surrender to the authorities. The cascade of claims against him began earlier in December, when a dozen women said the self-styled spiritual healer had abused them at his clinic. Mr. Faria denies the allegations. The medium is based in the central town of Abadiania, west of the capital Brazilian, but has followers worldwide. Brazil is all global newspaper reports that the medium withdrew 35 million real, 7 meter, from several bank accounts on Wednesday, convincing authorities that he could be planning to flee Brazil or hide the money in case of future compensation claims. Authorities responded with an arrest warrant on Friday. On Sunday, mobile phone footage broadcast on Brazil, his global TV showed Mr. Faria looking weary, getting out of a car and surrendering to police on a dirt road in Abadiania. He was transported to police headquarters in Guiana, the capital of Goa State. The medium can be heard on video saying that when he heard the abuse, allegations I surrendered to divine justice, and, as promised, I now place myself in the hands of earthly justice. His lawyer, Alberto Doran, said he would file an appeal on Monday. He said he hoped Mr. Faria might be held under house arrest instead of in prison. Last week, a Dutch photographer, the hero Lee McMoss, told Globo TV that Mr. Faria had manipulated her into performing sex acts and then raped her. Nine Brazilian women, who remained anonymous, also told the channel that the medium abused them on the premise of transferring his cleansing energy. A global newspaper later said it had spoken to two more women with similar allegations. The Shilukan representative said he vehemently rejects allegations of an improper practice during his treatments. Mr. Faria, who is not a medical doctor, has previously been fined and jailed for operating without a license. A TV host Oprah Winfrey traveled to Bravo in 2013 to meet him and witnessed him performing so-called psychic surgery at his clinic. According to ABC News, Mr. Faria claims that the spirits of more than 30 doctors and other entities can enter his body, and that they perform the healings. A huge explosion and fire has hit a restaurant in the modern Japanese city of Sapporo. Japanese police say 42 people were injured in the explosion, with one of them in a serious condition. The cause of the explosion in the Tolohira district is not yet known. Some reports suggested a gas blast. Images on social media initially showed flames rising from the area, with debris all around, and later firefighters tackling collapsed buildings. Police sealed off the area amid fears of more explosions. More than 25 engines were reportedly deployed. Click Twitter, come on 05th, end of Twitter post, by that show to command emergency. Services were first alerted to the explosion at about 20.30 on Sunday. 十一点三十分 GMT. Japanese broadcaster NHK said the area affected had both residential and dining establishments and was about 3 km southeast of the city center. The Japan Times quoted one eyewitness as saying the explosion sounded like thunder. Another eyewitness told NHK that the blast had broken the windows of the restaurant he was working in and that there were many injured people. Officials warned that the number of injured could rise about 10.
People have rallied in Hungary, its capital Budapest, against new labor laws, which have been labeled slave legislation by opponents. The crowds marched towards Parliament and the state TV headquarters in what was the fourth and largest protest since the laws were passed last week. Police fired tear gas to disperse protesters near the TV station. New rules mean companies can demand up to 400 hours of overtime a year and delay payment for it for three years. The government of Prime Minister Viktor Orban says the labor reform will benefit workers as well as companies who need to fill a labor shortage. Sunday, its demonstration was led by trade unionists and students. The event was dubbed Happy Xmas Prime Minister. Mr. Open is seen by his opponents as becoming increasingly authoritarian.